Well, hello everybody. It's Christmas morning here in Northern Ireland. Um, I was up early this morning with Roisin and my mum, opening a few presents, enjoying the atmosphere. Nice breakfast, back to bed again for an hour's rest, back up again now, so I'm ready for the rest of the day. This is what I've been waiting on, my new telescope. This is the Mead Lightbridge 10 inch truss tube F5 Dubsonian reflector. And I'm looking forward to opening it up. So this is the first time I've ever done an unboxing. I'm not going to really go into any detail, but just going to open it up here, speed up the process up, and I'll show you what the telescope looks like. And uh, I'll build it and show you the end result later. So here we go. Okay, I hope you can see all this. This is the rocker box. Here to show you up close. Okay, don't mind the music in the background. Rashi's playing music in the kitchen because she's making the Christmas dinner by helping her in a while. This is the view inside the box. Okay, so yes, this is the base of the telescope or rocker box if you're Ever used a Dubsonian before, you'll be familiar with this. It just seems like some of the nuts and things, so I'm gonna lift these out. Here. Okay. That's the base. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these out. Uh, out of their bags, get them set up and I'll start recording again in a minute. Mead. Every telescope I've owned over the years has been a mead. Yeah, so these are the side panels, the front and our side panel of the rocker box. And this here obviously sits with the azimuth rotation of the base as well. And there's the base over here, two plates. And so I'm going to set these here in the meantime. And screws and nuts, bags, all that kind of stuff as well. And this here is the 
A piece holder attaches to the side of the rocker box. So, I need to open up the big one now. I have to be careful this next one because that's where the primary mirror is. So I'm going to move everything out of the way onto the sofa here. Out of harm's way. Okay, now for the big one. This is the main box. So we've got the rocker box material set out here on the sofa. I'll look at them in a minute. I still have to find the instruction manual and the primary mirror and some of the other stuff. So, so far so good. So, all the parts of the board are just beautifully made. They really are. Nice and clean and solid. Well machined. Uh, very typical of need. Excellent craftsmanship in their products as always. Yes, I am using pink scissors and a pink razor blade female kit <laughs> I'm using at the moment. Okay, so just being careful here not to get carried away and slice my hand open for Christmas. Trying to cut away from myself all the time with these blades to reduce the chance of injury. Oh, oh right. Now we're getting to the more serious stuff. These are the truss tube pieces for the go for the, uh, the main optical tube assembly. Truss tube design. Instead of having a solid tube, this is an open tube assembly. The benefit of this is you can disassemble the tube fairly quickly on location and makes it easier to carry the telescope from one location to another in transit instead of having a large system squeezing it into the back you know so you can disassemble it so yeah I've worn several Dubsonians over the year I love the design but I've never had a trust tube before so this is interesting so yet again I'll give it a quick view of the GoPro here trust tube I've been listening to Christmas songs for the last two weeks, last night and the day. Russians are on the dance songs at the minute. It's there, so I'm putting everything up here out of the way so I can get organised. Okay, all the rubbish is going to go here. So, polystyrene. Oh ho! Now we're getting to the actual optical tube assembly. That's the base of the optical tube assembly. That's the top. Look at the nice focuser. Oh, I can't wait to get into that. And what is this? Eh, protection. What's the... Uh, I think that's a dew shield or lens hood. Keep that handy. Again, we'll just put that there. Now. This is coming apart nicely here. I have to say, it really does feel like Christmas opening on this. Always nice to have something to unwrap and build, I think. Yeah, this is really cool. So yeah, I don't know if this is showing me or not, but, uh, happy camper. Uh, the telescope I currently use is an 8 inch a Schmidt Cassegrain F6.3 uh, LX10 from Mead, yet again from Mead. That's my fourth or fifth telescope I've owned over the years, but all the other ones I have don't exist anymore. They've either stopped working or I give them away or I just upgraded. So the current Mead 8 inch is the only one I use. I've been using it for 20 years, maybe even 22, 23 year old telescope, and it's my faithful companion. I use it all the time. In fact, I've been using it just recently before Christmas there, observing deep sky objects, messy objects during the Earth's meteor shower up in Bedmore. I had a great view, it's actually a brilliant telescope, it really really is. But uh, turn off this here a second. But my favourite telescope I ever owned was a 16 inch Mead uh, Starfinder Dubsonian. Uh, lovely telescope, gigantic mirror on it, this thing was huge, the optical tube was so big I literally could crawl inside the tube and I do have photographs of that in existence. 
it's just fantastic. Um, so I love the Dobsonian design. I love a reflector. And Newtonian reflectors for me are the best telescopes around. If you're a visual astronomer, if you don't care about bells and whistles and technology and go-to systems and clock drives and astrophotography, then you want to get a Newtonian reflector. It takes away any of the complicated mounts, like an EQ mount, equatorial mounts. It can be very hard for people to set up, but intimidating. With a Dobsonian design, it's just simple alt azimuth up and down, left and right. It's very easy to use. You just point the telescope wherever you want. It's like an extension of your arm. They're easy to use and they're beautiful instruments. And then I love mirrors. The, the view of the night sky through your mirror is just something about it. It's very special. And because it's a Newtonian design, this is an F5. Uh, F5 focal length, focal ratio, sorry. So it's a fast optical system as well. So it will provide wide fields of view and, a, and flat field of view, which is very good for observing deep sky objects like uh, nebulae, star clusters, galaxies. And of course, for me in particular, comets. Comets are my main thing. So a reflector is a great instrument for a comet. So, okay, I'm gonna open this up more now. Okay, structure manual. Yeah. Comes with CD ROM, pretty good. Uh, more accessories, I'd say the A pieces in this. I want to see this A piece. So that's that. That's the main unboxing. To that definitely yes. Instruction manual. It's very nice, very nice indeed. Love the focuser. Absolutely love it. Tissue paper wrapped around the secondary mirror, which is a nice touch. Keep it protected. <coughs> mm -hmm. I love this focuser. Packaging off that plug. So I'm going to just set that down here for a minute, like so. Very, very nice primer. So that's the bottom of the optical tube assembly that rests within the rocker box here uh, and then the truss tube design extends on this upward and attaches to this. This is the top of the telescope. This is the eyepiece end. You can see the nice secondary mirror in here. I don't know if I can move that over to make it more visible. Nice secondary. And then this here is the lovely two inch focuser. I have it upside down so hold on a second. Yeah, I really like this focuser. So what I like about it is a, the, the actual focuser which comes with this telescope is a two inch focuser. So I can handle large barrel two inch wide pieces, wide field eyepieces. Uh, the best wide angle eyepieces are of course two inches in diameter. So you want those with your fast optical system if you have a large telescope. 
much better quality wider fields of view so this can handle the two inch eye pieces and also has a one and a quarter inch adapter here which can be removed for your standard barrel eye pieces it also comes with dual speed focuser so you have your main focuser here for adjustments and then you have a micro focuser on this side for precise slow focusing rate for observing the critical detail in the planet or whatever and you have these uh, tension screws here which obviously uh, hold the focuser in position so very very nice so there's the details me 10 inch truss tube dubsonian light bridge uh, the focal length is 1270 millimeters and the diameter of the perme is 254 millimeters so it's an f5 optical system from me to instruments corporation in california okay okay and it comes with your obligatory warning to not look at the sun via telescope yep never do that so i'll put that down and that's 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 the wheel that mounts onto the rocker box so and there's the primary mirror don't want to drop the gopro onto that 10 inches in diameter so collects a fair amount of light it's a good instrument for deep sky and and comets so okay yeah so that battery box is for the cool cooling fan Around the primary mirror, lots of screws here, nuts, uh, star heads, and there's Rhea coming to say hello, and hex wrenches. Hello, Rhea. Hello, I'm pulling the telescope. How are you doing? Hello, how are you? How are you? Hey, how are you doing? Go, 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 go. Yes, I'm pulling the telescope. Mm -hmm. Yes, see that? Look at that. Good girl. This is the eyepiece which comes with the actually comes standard with this telescope. I don't know if my autofocus will work. It isn't really. Actually I'm on manual mode so is that any better? I'm gonna go closer, can I get away with that? That's the 26 millimeter Mead QX super wide angle fully multi coated eyepiece comes with a two inch barrel so it provides generous actually large wide angle fields of view through the through the reflector so that'll be good for comet observing and deep sky objects everything I'm interested in I have an R1 in the office from my old 16 inch years ago it's the old Mead super wide angle series 4000 eyepiece it's 32 mil so I may switch them over whenever I get out observing and see which one has the widest or the best view but that's a beautiful eyepiece, it's really good quality nice one to need I'm also testing out a new external microphone today too on top of the camera Russian got me for Christmas so I don't know what it's like um, I'll test it here anyway ok I'm going to have a look at the instruction manuals I'm going to build this and get on with it and I'll speed, speed the time lapse up see how I get on the rocker box base uh, it's on two base plates there, that's your alt azimuth mm -hmm. or sorry that's your azimuth mount movement yeah nice and simple oh, it is. no fancy mounts no fancy technology the optical tube sits in here and you move it so it's nice and light and fast movement which is good for sweeping the sky mm -hmm. Got a central knob in the middle here to adjust the tension. And as you can see, the if I can get it, this floor, no much room for nothing. This floor yeah, turns over. You see the two, two base plates. And a central knot here. So I should loosen this a little bit. There. So. Right, so that's that stage. Mm -hmm. Do that in there. Right on to stage five, right. which is from stage five. That's the feet, isn't it? The rubber feet here. Stage five. 
four, five, five. Next attack the three feet to the bottom panel. Attack the three feet to the bottom panel. So now you've got the, the rocker box finished. I've got the, the feet on the bottom of the rocker box. Uh, I've now got the base of the telescope. Is that the end of, the end of it? This is the bottom of the telescope. Yeah. Good. This is the mirror housing. Uh, the 10 inch mirror sitting at the bottom here. Right. And we're going to assemble the truss tubes and then the top of the mirror, the secondary mirror is the top of the eyepiece holder. Right. So it's moving very well. That's what's not really for, just... Just for moving. So now we've got the truss tube. The truss is on. Here we have the truss. These bolts. These bolts are in. Securely, you can loosen them on the case and take the truss tube out and actually send them to the telescope. But my intention is to have a bolt and just lift. Right, the rocker box. Where? Just have to straight out from out of the from the driving, you know. Right. So on the stage, next stage. Okay, so we now have the rocker box assembled, we've got the secondary mirror at the bottom, we've got the truss tubes, and now we have the top of the optical tube assembly, the secondary mirror in here. So okay, so I'll give you a test. The movement is nice. So, being an F5 optical system, the tube is rather short. <coughs> That's how you generate a fast wide angle focal system. But uh, in practice, I mean, observing overhead objects are fine, but once you start getting lower down, you're bending your back quite a bit to see through this one. And objects on the horizon, like comets, will require a lot of bending down like this, so I reckon I'm going to have to get some kind of stool or chair to use on location. What should it be? I need a stool or a chair to take off me to see in the eyepiece here, you see. Right. If I'm looking low in the sky, there's Ray coming to explore. So... So what is this thing here for? A computer. Right? Aye. Uh, movements are good. Mm-hmm. Nice and stuck and heavy, so it holds position well. Mm -hmm. Rushing there. Ooh. The first part of it there is the main part. Okay, well, it moves by itself. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. 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 okay, so. And I have the one and a quarter inch adapter removed, and I have the two inch wide feed 26mm eyepiece in the holder and I now have mounted the reflex sight. Normally with a telescope you get a finder scope. You can have an optical finder scope or a reflex sight. An optical finder scope is like a miniature telescope, like a refractor sits on top of the tube and it often has a crosshair on it so you can use that to find your star or object in the sky and then center it in the field of view of the eyepiece. A reflex sight uses a laser, kind of like a laser, it's like a red dot display, a battery power that gets projected onto the screen, and the red dot or a cross is projected onto the night sky, and again you just center that cross onto your star or deep sky object and then observe it to the eyepiece. Next thing you find an object's really easy to do, really fast, but it has to be aligned outside, you know, I see these tiny hex wrenches here, it has to be aligned with the actual stars in real time, so I'll do that in our night. But that's it now, that's day done, almost there, I'm getting there. Well, everyone, the telescope is complete. Just finished Christmas dinner there now, and I came back after dinner after dessert and did a few bits and pieces on it. So that's the basic setup now. Lovely azimuth action, nice and smooth and light, which I like.
like about it is the altitude axis is actually quite stiff, which is good, so it holds its position. Sometimes the Dubsonians of the mounts are a little bit cheaply made. They can actually drop in height themselves and fall down. You have to counterbalance them with a weight system at the back. But this one seems very well balanced and it's stiff. There's actually an adjustment, adjustment knob here where I can uh, adjust the stiffness of the altitude motion, which is pretty good. It comes with a dew cap or lens cap over the primary mirror here as well, coming handy on your outside. Put that back on. So whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, I'm gonna need an observing chair still of some kind for observing low down in the sky. Here's the 26mm eyepiece in. Lovely it is too. So if I'm hunting near the horizon, I actually could be crouched down to this and still be comfortable. So it's nice light motion for horizontal sweeping and a stiff motion for vertical and it holds position even when it's low down there which is really good. I like it. So the question is how portable is it for taking out in the van to dark observing sites? I reckon I should be able to lift the whole unit up here. If I unscrew this side of the way, there we go. I've just lifted it out and I put it back in to the wrapper box like so. So there you go, there's the 26mm eyepiece. Fine focuser and the larger reflex sight here. So hopefully this is collimated. It should come collimated anyway, but if it's not, you can do it yourself using the adjustment screws at the back of the primary mirror. And a nice little IP shelf on the side. That's the one and a quarter inch adapter for the RI pieces. Lower this down. There's a built-in fan at the back. Um, I need to get batteries for it. And some velcro strips to secure it. There. So that's pretty much it, made and ready to be used.